Do you hear me? Yes, thank you. You know, I think that everyone here is like kind of united by the will to make a difference in the world. You know, we all want a better world with less conflicts. And uh, we have the will to, you know, fight together against these dark forces that we feel sweeping over the world. And always when we talk about these dark forces, I always think like, who are we talking about? Because, you know, I suppose we mean all those people who does not want the same thing as we want for the world. But, you know, actually, I never met anybody who presented themselves that way. I never met anyone who told me, hi, I'm part of the dark force and we are striving together to try to make the world a worse place for everybody. It seems like no one is really, you know, identifying themselves in that description. Now, I think that, you know, we all want a better world with less conflicts. We just have different solutions. Even the most like fanatic and extreme people we can think of think that they're striving for something good. They just think that they have the only solution. Because you know, when you get uh, fanatic about something, you are no longer a person with ideas and beliefs. You are a believer. That's your identity. And that's also why it becomes so you know, personal when someone comes to you and tells you that your solution is wrong. And I think we're quite aware that we will get this reaction when it uh, comes to like religious believers. Uh, I used to be one of them, or I, w I was brought up in this uh, fundamentalistic Christian church. And you know, when I started in first grade in a public school, I told all my classmates that I was a member of the only true religion, and they were all going to die very soon in God's great war if they didn't join us. You know, uh, my, my teacher, she, she did not uh, accuse me of hate speech. Uh, I think that her silence was kind of her way of respecting my beliefs and my religion. And, uh, or maybe she was just really uncomfortable, I don't know. But you know, when I told my church members about this great testimony that I made in school, uh, they told me that I might be more successful in my missionary work if I talked a little bit more about the great benefits people would have if they joined us, rather than to talk so much about all the bad stuff that would happen to all those who didn't. And you know, I learned to do that when I grew up, but I mean, we always knew that we weren't able to convince everyone. You know, but because I think given the number of people we actually recruited, I would say that the function of our missionary work was more a matter of, you know, manifesting our own cause and manifesting our own uh, uh, beliefs rather than, rather than an effective way of saving lost souls. But, you know, years later, I started to become like friends with people who didn't share my beliefs. And, uh, you know, I realized that they were actually quite nice and normal people. And that made it really hard to continue believing that they all deserve to die. Now, I've been working with former cult members for about seven years. And uh, a few years ago, I also started working with a colleague of mine who's helping former political fanatics. And, you know, we started talking about our past lives and comparing. And we realized that the way we looked on ourselves and on other people, our cause and on the world, was identical. I mean, I was a fanatic Christian, and he was a fanatic nationalist. But you know, we both saw that the world was going in the wrong direction. I mean, we saw all these conflicts, all the bad things happening, just as well as we do here today. And we both thought that we had the best solution to all of that. And also, we were really aware of these dark forces, you know? We were even aware of them among our own brothers and sisters in faith. If someone started to like question our values, asking the wrong questions too much, uh, even listening to the wrong kind of music, they had bad tendencies. And those tendencies came from the dark force, you know. So we had to instantly kind of expel them because we didn't want to get infected by the dangerous ideas. So we kind of labeled them and uh, dehumanized them. 
so that we wouldn't have to listen to them anymore. And no, the thing is that we both were really convinced that we were fighting for something good and that it would all turn out very well in the end, at least for us. We were both believers, you know? And when it comes to like political fanatism, we don't always seem to get that it's a matter of belief. I mean, for example, we're quite often trying to counter uh, nationalism by informing people that their beliefs are based on the incorrect assumptions about what culture or nationality really means. And you know, to me, that is a little bit like uh, having a conversation with a fundamentalistic Christian or any Christian and start the discussion by telling them that the Bible is incorrect. Because it won't matter to them if it's, if it's not logical to me. I mean, the church I was a member of holds the world record in predicting the wrong date for the end of the world. And you know, that didn't bother us at all. We still had the truth. It's like, I can never convince a cult member that he's a cult member. I can never convince a fanatic that he's a fanatic because he won't recognize himself in that description. But you know, it seems to me sometimes when we're doing this good work that we're all doing, that we're doing like I did in school. I mean, we're only talking to people about all the bad stuff that will happen if, uh, if they do not like accept our values. And we can't really force people to love our values. I mean, all we can do is uh, like try our best to convince them the benefits of making certain choices or other choices. And sometimes I think, I mean, when we work with, especially with young people, who might start to show some kind of tendencies that scares us, how often do we like push them over the edge to become even more fanatic or radical than they ever identify themselves as before we told them that if you're reading too much on the wrong internet pages, if you're uh, like linking to the wrong blog posts on Facebook, or if you're asking the wrong questions or having some kind of sympathy for the wrong kind of politics, then you will instantly become part of this dark force that we want to fight. I mean, when we do that, what are we creating? And when we have all these campaigns, you know, when we arrange the campaigns, when we are fighting together against this bad force, are we doing it because we think that we're really reaching out to the individuals behind, the individuals who might need the change the most? Or is it a matter of manifesting our own beliefs, our own cause. Is it sometimes, you know, uh, about our own will to define who our enemy is and just have a show off to show them that we are nothing like them and we don't belong in this world together? Because if we do that, what are we creating? Are we creating more distance or are we like offering an opportunity to change? Because if we are just telling people what they should think, what they not sh should think, and what kind of values they must have or must not have, then we're not really treating them the way that uh, the first article in the Declaration of Human Rights defines them, you know, as individuals with reason and the ability to think for themselves. And, you know, we don't get to choose who have those rights. We don't get to choose who deserves them, them because those rights cannot be deserved. You are born with them. I mean, how frustrating it can be, but it's like that. I mean, people change when they find themselves being in a context where they get the opportunity to have more value and get better treatment than they did before. You know, when somebody's acting different from what they expected, when somebody adds something to their lives, they don't change just because we are trying to take their beliefs away. Thank you.